Hi. So the purpose of this video is to give you a better understanding of what the BMAT involves. So the BMAT is the Biomedical Admissions Test and it is used by six to seven universities in the country to <coughs> help them gauge <coughs> of how good you are at approaching problem solving questions, scientific questions and how good you are at writing essays and developing your ideas, I guess, and critical thinking. At the moment, the University of Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, Imperial, BSMS, which stands for Brighton and Sussex Medical School, and Leeds are using it. Um, the different universities use it to different extents, so I think you might want to look at their websites to, um, you know, uh, get some more detail about how much or how important um, the BMAT is to them. So, the BMAT consists of three sections. I'll quickly whiz through what they are, then I'll, exp then I'll explain them in a bit more detail. So section one is all about um, your aptitude and how good you are at problem solving. I guess a bit of critical thinking as well. So you'll be asked um, in a variety of verbal questions, mathematical questions. It's actually really similar to the UK CAT. So if you do the UK CAT in the summer, I guess it's a really good revision for section one of your BMAT. And um, section two is a scientific section. So it has got questions that are GCC based um, and yeah, they're just pretty much the higher end of GCC questions. So all you need to do for that is revise your GCC content. And section three is an essay. Um, I think quite a few people are very easily daunted by the fact that they have to write an essay. To be honest, in my opinion, the se section three was the hardest of all the sections. Um, this is because I wasn't really good at essays ever. However, um, I think with practice, anyone can be good at them. And all you need to do is just be able to develop your ideas and you don't even have to say a lot of points. You have to just kind of pick up, pick an argument and explain your points and maybe think of counter arguments. So not too complicated. So now I'll go through all the sections one by one in a lot of detail. So section one is technically an IQ test. It tests your ability to work through questions very efficiently and it allows the um, universities to see how good you are at pretty much problem solving and critically thinking. Um, in the BMAT you'll have around 34-35 section 1 questions and um, I guess it's quite time pressured because you have to, you know, go through a lot of mathematical calculations and you have to be able to, you know, these are multi-step calculations, these aren't simple 1 plus 1 questions, you have to, you know, think logically and you have to work things out. And so um, it's important that you practice with section 1. Um, I suggest that even if you're not doing the UK CAT, if you're just applying to four BMAT universities, which I guess might not be the best ideas, but I'll do another video on that and about applying to university. Anyway, so if you are doing the UK CAT, UK CAT's perfect for BMAT section one practice. You do, you know, it's intensely timed questions, um, and you have to work really quickly. You have to be able to, you know, um, build up your mental math skills and fly through questions. And do note in the BMAT, you don't get calculator. So your mental, mental maths has to be on point. So for section one you have around an hour. Um, there are typically around 30 to 35 questions giving you around 90 seconds to the two minute mark to do each question. Um, when you're practicing at first of course don't time yourself, start in a relaxed manner, understand what the question is asking you to do, but then later on do start timing yourself. Um, I would strongly advise that if you don't finish all the questions in section one and, you're, and you are timing yourself, don't freak out. Um, you know, most people don't actually finish the sections. I know that when I did my BMAT, I didn't actually finish all the questions. I know I left a good five, six out. And in my year, I still got 6.2, um, which I guess is a good score. But of course, you know, everyone wants to do as well as they can. However, as you can see from my case, I missed out five or six questions and still got 6.2. So it's not about how many questions you answer. The questions that you do attempt to answer, make sure that you answer them correctly. And if you, if you ever come across a hard question in section one, leave it and come back. So yeah, it's less about how much you know, it's more about how you can apply your knowledge. So section two is completely scientific. Um, it tests you on, you know, uh, biology, chemistry, physics and maths, and this is purely GCC based. So you, you need to really know your GCC syllabus, syllabi very well. Um, some of you will have done dual science instead of triple science GCC, and for you guys, I strongly suggest that you spend your summer just a few days going, or a bit more than that maybe, going through your unit threes um, of your GCC science subjects. Um, this is because a lot of the questions in section two are unit three based, 
And so it would be really beneficial for you, for you guys to have that knowledge. It allows you to tackle the questions a lot easier. Now, section two is really irritating because, okay, it's multiple choice like section one. However, the answers section two gives you, they're very similar to one another. And so it's very easy for you to end up doubting yourself. So, for example, in physics, you have the you know circuits and parallel circuits and series circuits. And I know a lot of you guys will get confused about this because I couldn't understand this, even though even though I did A-level physics. And you know how like voltage splits and current splits when you have series and parallel circuits and all of that malarkey. Right, know that theory inside out, because if you don't know that or if those types of um, that that type of knowledge, you'll really struggle. Um, so maybe before you start doing your actual papers for section two, just spend a good week or two just smashing out your GCSE sciences. That will really help. Mathematics is quite basic. It's just kind of if you, if you do A level math, it's really easy. It's just manipulating you know equations, making something the subject, and um, square rooting thirds, this that this. Really easy to get, get you know get hold of. Um, so yeah, you have around twenty twenty four questions, which you have to do in around half an hour, I think. So it is quite time pressure, time pressured. You have around a minute per question, and again, don't expect to answer all the questions within the half an hour. You might leave out three or four questions. I know I left out five questions, and I made loads of silly errors. I know one that I made an error on, which was about the cyclohexene, and it asked, you know, that was one of the options, and it was like, which one's the alkene or something, and didn't forgot completely that cyclohexene was an alkene. Silly mark I lost. Anyway, I have no regrets. I tried my heart, tried my best. Um, so, yeah, for section two, all you need to do, all you need to do is revise your GCSE sciences and practice, practice, practice. Section three. Now, this is the one that most people find really daunting. Um, section three is an essay. You have to write an A4 page within half an hour. Now, they can ask you a variety of questions. Usually, you get an option, you know, an option from four different questions. One's usually ethical based. One's for, for the vet meds, because you know vet meds also have to do the BMAT, and the other two are just general scientific questions that you could talk about. Now the BMAT, it always gives you really broad questions, it allows you to talk about a huge variety of things, it gives you a lot of freedom, and so there's never really a marks thing that you have to follow. You can, in, you can interpret the question in your own way, however, I suggest that when you do start writing or planning, it is important that you kind of, once you've chosen your essay, Identify the key bits of the question. So identify the key arguments that you need to kind of produce and the key ethical issues, let's say, um, that are presented in the question. Now, I strongly suggest that for section three, you have to plan. Um, I spent at least a good 10 minutes, 10 minutes planning, and then I spent 20 minutes writing. You kind of need to know what you're going to write before you write. Um, I was really bad at planning when I first started um, revising. For the BMAT, and I know that a lot of the friends who got like five A's and four A's in the section threes, they were really good at planning, and they made sure to plan their essays. They never rushed into their essays because technically, to write a page of A4, you don't really need 20 minutes. You need even even 15 minutes is enough. Um, so ensure to plan, and once you've got a really good plan, you can just whiz through y your essay. And having a plan prevents you from waffling. As soon as you know you're starting to waffle, just stop and say, no, that's not my plan, so I'm not going to write about that. But if it is relevant, like that it's a fact about you know, a certain health act, do put it in, but then quickly finish it off, stop waffling. Now, section three is scored um, on two different, you know, for two different categories. Um, one's on content and one's on your quality of written communication. Content ranges from one to five. Five is the best, one is the worst. The average is three, um, but most people get fours, very few get fives. But if you, get, if you do get five, that means you've you know, done pretty well. Uh, and your quality of written communication ranges from A to E. Um, I think about 85% of people get A, which you know is expected, and about 10% uh, Bs and 5% Cs, and hardly any get Ds and Es. If you get a D or an E for the quality of written communication, your hopes of medical school might have to wait another year because that's usually a bit of the cut-off points for many universities. For the BMAT, there are a huge variety of resources and a load of different, you know, companies doing their BMAT courses, blah, blah, blah. I strongly suggest that you guys don't waste your money on going on these £300 courses, um, you know, for BMAT revision, UK CAT revision, la-di-da. All you need 
is the GCC textbooks, the stack of past papers that are freely available on the BMAT, BMAT website, and also um, a few books. So these books that I'd recommend is this thing called the ISC 400 BMAT questions book. This is fantastic, it gives you explanations for all the questions at the end. There's another book called 600 BMAT questions published by Uni Admissions, I think. Anyway, I'll put, the, I'll put all the links in the comment section below. And this book is, you know, really good because it also explains all the answers to the questions. Do you know that this book does have a few errors, but they're not that, you know, frequent, so it's fine. On the BMAT website, every year they do publish like a CGP revision guide, the actual BMAT consortium, and this is really useful because it contains exactly the things that you need to revise. You, need, you do need to sign up for it, it is free, so it's worth getting. Um, I know there's a website called medschoolmentoring.com as well, which offer you guys free BMAT mentoring and all, so maybe, you know, check that out. So I just want to quickly talk about the scoring system for the BMAT for Section 1 and Section 2. I did not mention it earlier. So Section 1 and Section 2 are, you know, between 1 and 9. They use a normal distribution curve to kind of um, work out the scoring. So most people get around 5, 4.9, up to 5.5. This is like the, the mean. Um, that's for Section 1 and for Section 2 it's around 4.8 something. Um, you want to aim for around five or sixes or sevens, sevens ideally, but it's quite rare to get. So don't, you know, don't put pressure on yourself. If you get a five, when I was doing the exam, I, I knew I'd be happy with a five. Like I was like, if I get a five, I'll be happy. But I was aiming for a higher score, obviously. Um, it depends on which universities you're applying to as well, actually. Um, the University of Cambridge, they really take the BMAT importantly. And, you know, um, Oxford as well. Oxford actually use the BMAT to shortlist their candidates. And Cambridge use it after the interviews to kind of, I think before the interviews as well for some colleges. But I applied to Cambridge and I think um, I got called for interview before the BMAT, published, BMAT results were published. So I think they don't always take your BMAT results into account, but they definitely look at it after interview when they're choosing who to give offers to and who not to give offers to. I think with UCL and Imperial, they have like, Imperial definitely have a cutoff, and if you don't meet the cutoff, you're chopped off the list. UCL, they're quite tolerant. You know, they have. And they have a holistic approach to everyone's applications. So even if you do but do do badly one section, let's say you get like a four, four point zero, three point nine, but you get like seven point nine and a three or a five eight in section one and section three, they're probably going to call you for an interview. So don't no need to panic. BSMS, I think they use it to um, kind of rank their candidates. I'm not sure about leads, so maybe look that up if you're applying to leads. So I hope this video has been useful and as mentioned before, any questions do put them in the comments section below. Um, I will be producing you know, a lot more videos about my application process to medical school, about the offers I received, the interview process I went through and how I prepared um, for my medical school application. Um, so hopefully if you guys are interested do subscribe, do subscribe and do like the video and hopefully I'll be useful to you guys. Well thank you for watching and um, see you guys soon.